Hi, my name's Hannah, and in this demonstration, we'll show you how to use video connectivity IP cores and other IP cores from the Intel FPGA Video and Vision Processing Suite. Specifically, we'll explain how you can use SDI and clocked video FPGA IP cores to create your own GenLock design for applications where deterministic synchronization between video signals is a key requirement. The Video and Vision Processing Suite offers many highly optimized IP cores for generating, routing, and managing video timing and control signals. These IP cores are used to provide a control loop system to lock receiver and transmitter pixel clocks to avoid any drifting or rolling effects on the output video stream. If you can't lock input and output clocks in order to maintain synchronization between video signals, you have to use some form of video buffering. This introduces additional delay, dropped or repeated frames, as well as resource, power and memory bandwidth requirements. There are many applications where precise alignment and timing between video sources is essential, and therefore GenLock is a key requirement such as virtual studios, where synchronization between cameras and computer-generated graphics is needed to create realistic fused streams, medical surgical robotics, where small precise and deterministic latency between camera input and video output is a crucial requirement for patient safety, broadcasting and multi-camera productions, where multiple sources such as cameras, Playback devices and graphic generators need to be in perfect synchronization to deliver a seamless viewing experience. Video walls and display installations, where multi-display setup requires precise synchronization for seamless video content consistency. And industrial and 3D stereoscopic imaging, where precise and continuous timing alignment is necessary for functional safety and viewing comfort. I'm now going to hand over to our in-house technical expert, Alexi, who will talk you through our demonstration. In general, there are two ways to implement video general. The first approach relies on using an external component, such as voltage control crystal oscillator, or VCXO for short, to track an input reference clock and continuously adjust the output. The second approach implements similar VCXO functionality by using only internal FPGA resources such as PLLs and control logic. This approach is often beneficial due to the lower PCB design and component cost. However, the final decision on the implementation will depend on such factors as particular FPGA device capability, clock source jitter, number of input and output video interfaces you need to synchronize, as well as the video format the system needs to support. This demonstration design employs SDI Video Connectivity IP and Intel FPGA Video and Vision Processing IP cores such as GenLock Controller, GenLock Router and Video Timing Generator. It also uses additional video conditioning cores such as Promo Resampling and Color Space Conversion, a 3D lookup table, tone mapping and an embedded processor for the overall control. With its off-the-shelf video IP cores, the Intel FPGA Video and Vision Processing Suite enables the creation of custom video processing pipelines with high performance and low latency processing, resulting in smooth design experience. All the IP cores can be instantiated on every device available in Portus Pro design suite, such as Intel Cyclone 10GX, ARIA 10, Stratex 10, and Agile X FPGAs. In this demonstration, we have a video generator and stream analyzer outputting and receiving video over the SDI interface to Intel Agile X7 iSeries SoC development kit through the Nextera 12G SDI Dota card, which is connected via an FMC port. We also have a monitor and a laptop connected to the board via the JTAC interface to control IP parameters via the terminal window. In this video processing pipeline configured on the Agile X7 SoC dev kit, the video stream is ingested from the generator via an off-the-shelf Intel SDI IP core, which supports any resolution frame rate or color space. Chroma resampling and color space conversion are used to precondition the video stream to a common color format and color space, and the protocol converter IP translates the video from the full to light variant of the Intel FPGA video streaming protocol, which runs on the AXI4 streaming standard. The 3D lookup table and tone mapping IP cores process the video stream in real time without buffering. 
The stream is converted back from the light to full variant of the Intel FPGA video streaming protocol before being output via SDI to a receiving device. The video pipeline for this example design is driven by three asynchronous clocks. The first one is the input pixel clock, 148.5 MHz, which is generated directly on the SDI FMC card. The second one is the video processing clock, 300 MHz, which is generated from a programmable clock generator available on the Agilex SOC dev kit. Finally, the third clock is the output pixel clock, 148.5 MHz, that is generated using an on-chip fractional PLL or FPLL, making all three clocks asynchronous to each other. A VSYNC-SO less subsystem included in this example design allows locking input and output pixel clocks. This subsystem contains the following modules. An F-tile transceiver with dynamic reconfiguration and fractional PLL capabilities to generate an output pixel clock. A phase frequency detector or PFD and a PAD-LPF controller to measure the difference between the input and output pixel clocks to generate a control word that allows tracking or locking the phase of the output pixel clock relative to the input pixel clock. A set of debug control registers to diagnose the status of the video system. This example design allows you to enable and disable the genlock mode via a control terminal interface. By default, this example design has a genlock mode enabled, allowing to display a stable output video stream on a monitor. When a genlock mode is enabled, you can press the C key to see the current frequency values for the input and output pixel clocks, as well as the difference between those two clocks. In this mode, the frequency difference would be around plus minus 2 Hz. You can also disable the genlock mode. This can be achieved by pressing the F key. This effectively disables the genlock mode and let the system work in a free running mode, where drifting and rolling effect on the output video stream is visually noticeable as the processing video pipeline does not have a frame buffer on it. Again, you can press the C key to see the frequency difference between the input and output pixel clocks, which in this case is expected to fluctuate as the two clocks are not synchronous. To get back to a genlock mode, press G again. A video streaming 5 IP is used to provide a small on-chip line buffer capabilities to control the latency between input and output. The control range depends on the video resolution and FIFO size. In this example design, for a 4K60 stream, you can set the genlock latency to be between 1 and 6 video lines. By default, this example design is configured to genlock the system with approximately 1.5 line delay between input and output. However, it is possible to increase or decrease the latency on the fly by pressing P and O keys respectively. Please, keep in mind that when the set latency between input and output falls outside the allowed range, the video system will lose synchronization. To allow the system to be fully synchronous, the latency should be brought back to the legal range. As explained earlier, a similar genlock functionality can be achieved by using external off-the-shelf components. So, in addition to this VCXO less design, we have also released similar but slightly simplified example design, which uses an external VCXO component to actively track input and adjust the output clock. Instead of the VCXO less subsystem, it uses a generic crosspoint IP to route field, vertical, and horizontal timing signals coming from the SDI RX to drive the external VCXO chip. The external VCXO generates a 27 MHz clock, which is then used by an ultra-low JITA clock generator to produce an output pixel clock that is phase-locked or gen-locked with the input pixel clock. Both external VCXO and output clock generator are already available as part of the Nextera 12G SDI FMC card used in this example design. The overall controls to enable or disable genlock and adjust the latency are exactly the same. There are many variants of the external VCXO component. To illustrate an alternative approach to building a genlock system with an external VCXO, we have also produced and released an example design based on ARIA-10 SOC dev kit 
with an HDMI 2.0 input and output. The main processing pipeline looks very similar to the previous two design. However, the video clock control system now looks slightly different. In this example design we have a clocked video to full raster converter IP, which converts from a clocked video format used by the HDMI RX IP to Intel FPGA streaming video full raster protocol. The full raster variant of the protocol allows carrying both active pixel data as well as timing information present in blanking and active region of the video frame. The Axis Stream Broadcaster IP duplicates the full raster video stream and passes it to onto both the video processing pipeline as well as GenLog signal router. The video processing pipeline for this example design is composed of a clocked video input IP, chroma resampler, color space converter, tone mapper, a 3D lookup table, video FIFA, and clocked video output with an embedded video timing generator. A GenLog signal router generates video synchronization signals based on video timing markers derived from the input video stream. A GenLog controller IP which is a control loop system that can be paired with external VCXO devices, such as SI516 in this case, with control voltage input capabilities. This IP takes input video RX clock and generate TX clock as input and output of PWM type signal that is proportional to the difference between RX and TX clock period caused by the clock drift. The PWM type signal is connected to the voltage control input pin of the external VCXO device to reduce the clock drift, so the generated TX clock is locked to the RX reference clock. Suppose the GenLog controller determined that the TX pixel clock is faster than the RX pixel clock. In that case, the IP generates a control word to slow down the TX frequency. This will result in reducing the duty cycle of the PWM signal that is driving the voltage control pin of the external VCXO. Similarly, if the general controller determines that the TX pixel clock is slower than the RX pixel clock, the IP will generate a control volt that increases the TX frequency. This is achieved by increasing the duty cycle of the PWM signal that is driving the voltage control pin on the external VCXO chip. Once the video pipeline is in genlock mode, you should expect a stable cadence between RX and TX start of frames plus minus a few pixels. Similar to the previous two design, the control of the genlock system is enabled via the JTAC interface and the terminal window. The control options and keys are similar to the other two designs. For more information about these designs, please see the corresponding user guides. Intel Video Connectivity and Processing IP cores give you the ability to get to market fast with your state-of-the-art custom video products. These highly parameterizable IP cores provide push-button performance for your applications while still maintaining low FPGA resource usage and low latency. Start designing today by downloading our Intel Quarters Prime Design software, Intel Video Connectivity IP cores, as well as the Intel FPGA Video and Vision Processing IP suite and design examples into our modular Intel FPGA development kits. You can find more information from the links on the screen.